Okay, now here is an application of, um, let's look at the major seventh inversion. We'll deal with G. The major seventh is down here, but we can put it anywhere. It doesn't matter where it is. If it's up here, it's going to be sounding like that. So now, just inside of this shape, easy enough, right? But you can take all of the, the notes That's just in the inside of that shape. And it ends on the major seventh. Now, when we move it up, we have a whole nother area of activity still major seven. That's in that area. Now, remember we talked about this cluster kind of chord? It's nice and pretty because it's sort of piano sounding, but we need to make, make uh, use a chord that it's actually easier to play because you sometimes, if you're not playing chord melody or something like that, you want to be able to grab the chord really quick. So we can use this or this, which is the nine. But still in this area of activity, The last one up here. All right, so that's the major seventh, a little bit of an application right there. So you can start seeing that you can make music out of these shapes. Okay, now let's go to the minor seventh shape. We talked about these earlier, and I'll run over them again. Once again, these are all areas of activity, but because you have uh, right here, we've all been playing this stuff before, but now it's minor instead of major, it's minor seven. Sounds a little bluesy, doesn't it? That's because it is. Now to the next shape. It sort of lends itself to the blues because really they're one and the same. And that's the thing that we like about the blues because it makes you feel good. It gives you some emotion. Okay, so now the next shape is up here. Now the last one's up here. And then the next one up is actually a complete octave up. So when you're playing this, you're gonna run out. But as when you get up here, you can play the exact same thing that you played down there. And this shapes the minor seventh, it lends itself to the pentatonic scale, which all of us know, and um, all of the rock, jazz, blues, all the genres use this, because it's a guitar thing. It's not just a music thing, it's just a guitar thing, because it's easy to play. The next one up is the same. Next one up. The next one up. And that's it. Now you're just going to be completing it from there. So hopefully it gives you an idea 
of what you can do with these shapes once you get them under your fingers. Let's take a look at the dominant shape here that we do. I'll do it again because we did it earlier. And remember, the inversions is just arpeggios, note, but now it's a chord instead of just one note. And if you keep going, you're just going to run out. But you can go as far as you can go. As you can see. So you're going to run out, but you can go as far as your frets will let you go. So this is what the dominant seventh can give you. Okay, so now you might have the question, well, why do I need to play in any shape? Um, why am I playing in a high shape or a low shape? What determines that? Well, for me, I've played with piano players and keyboard players all of my life. So what happens is you're playing in the band and you have to interact with who you're playing with. So if I'm playing with a keyboard player who actually is playing high, I'm playing low. So my shape is gonna be down here. But if he's playing low, I'm gonna play high, so I'm not in the same register as he is. And as you do this for a long time, it starts happening automatically. So when he's playing down here, I'm playing up here. That way, we're never in the same register and we're never fighting each other. So that's a part of about listening to your environment and being aware of it and a part of it.